Uh, we have lots coming up over the next few hours, including a call from Tory MP Richard Drax for job seekers who constantly refuse work to be conscripted into the army. And we'll also look at the latest government solution for our overcrowded prisons. And today we're joined in the studio by our very favourite presenter's friend. Hey. He is former government advisor James Price. Uh, welcome, James. Well, let's talk about this uh, uh, proposal by Richard Drax. He's the uh, veteran Tory MP for South Dorset <laughs> who has a very strange habit. I don't mind calling him out on this because it really gets on my nerves. We often want to talk to him about the Bibby Stockholm right in the middle of his constituency. Does he ever, ever come on? Why not? I know. We wanted but, to talk to you about but, this, Drax, because we think this is a great well, Come topic. on about this, for God's sake. Don't be shy, Richard. We don't bite. Yeah, you no, know, you're not a spring chicken. You've been around. You can come on to television and you can talk about your proposal now uh, to uh, at least take pr some prisoners and maybe uh, people in the young a generation and uh, force them into conscription into the army. Uh, you love this idea, don't you, Alice? Oh, my <laughs> word. No, I mean, I, I actually think what you've done is turned my policy into his. He was saying people who refuse to do jobs. I was the one who said, why don't you do the, like, ne'er-do-wells in prison who've con committed minor <laughs> offences and the kids in hoodies on bikes who carry weapons anyway. I love it. I actually think all we keep hearing is, first of all, our armed forces are just nothing. We've got nothing. We're, we're totally under-resourced. Secondly, you've got this snowflake generation who don't know how lucky they are. They don't seem to value our country, its heritage. They don't understand that they've got all of these yeah. freedoms that most other societies don't have. And then we've heard from the top, haven't we, of armed forces that uh, we might actually need to start talking about things like national service um, because we're so weakened. And that's what, I mean, rather than conscription, it's national service that I think should potentially so you'd be... Have you have to do it, you have to do it. Yeah, so many other countries do it. You know, most Scandinavian countries do it. I think Belgium still does it, Luxembourg. It's not some sort of brutish, medieval, tyrannical regime thing. A lot of the societies we often hold up as being advanced and fair and decent in the West actually have this. And I think, I once lived with a Finnish girl and she loved her national service so much, she is still in their version of the TA. And uh, lots of Scandinavians who do it stay as, um, you know, on the books as... Uh, Amateur shoulders, shoulders. But it's not going to happen, is it, James? I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon under any future Labour government that comes in. That's yeah, sure. yeah, exactly. I think, I think that, that there is a liberal, a classical liberal opposition to the idea of forcing people into something like this. And I think that you know, that would be fairly well established so that if we were still a nice, cuddly, small state liberal country. I think the thing you're highlighting, Alex, is that it feels that our society has fallen quite a long way in a lot of different areas. Mm -hmm. And that if we can't uh, encourage people to care about their country. We can't encourage them to act with the kind of civility that we need to have a, the nice, fair, open, tolerant society that all of us want, that most of us have inherited as well. Then people will start to look to more extreme examples like this. I don't, do you think it's an extreme example? Because I'm not saying that it has to be a whole year, but perhaps when kids reach 16, once they've done their GCSEs during the summer holidays, that they all have to go and do a couple of months. At, you know, I, I would actually like it to be a year. But, you know, do some press-ups, run around a field, have some structure in your life, understand what hierarchy and discipline is, because so many kids these days haven't got a clue. And you've got all these young guys who've got all this pent-up energy. They want to belong to something. They need to burn off their raging hormones. Why don't you just stick them into the military instead? A lot of people who are sort of, you know, without structure in their life benefit hugely from that. But uh, it's a free country, and I think you ha should have the right <laughs> to be able to say no. Right, I think, and, and this is the difficulty. <laughs> you don't have the right to say I'm not going to school, do you? You have the right to say I don't want to go into the army, surely. Well, this is why David Cameron came up with this idea of the National Citizen Service, yeah. which is all meant to be the kind of, you know, non-combative, non-violent end of all of these things. And I think if we go and look at it now, it seems to have fallen down that dictum that any organisation that isn't quite right-wing will become left-wing eventually, and it's sort of basket weaving and, and some woke nonsense getting in there as well. But your point about young people on this is really interesting. Lots of posh schools, much posher than mine, I never had this, have this kind of young cadet force thing, right, where people get a taste of all this. They really seem to enjoy it. They seem to get all the benefits from it. When you look at schools like Michaela, which is this amazing school in North London, one of the most culturally, ethnically diverse bits of the whole country, and you've got people from all over the place, it's the strictest school in Britain. You're not allowed to talk in the corridors, your uniform is a tiny bit off, you get an after-school detention, all these things. And the kids do amazingly well, and they love the discipline and they thrive off yeah. it. So maybe it's that kind of discipline that we need to have back in all walks of life, because, as we all know, discipline brings freedom in the end of the day. I, refuse, yeah. I, I was a, a conscientious, conscientious objector from joining the 
army cadets or the sea cadets or the air cadets at my school. Uh, so every Tuesday afternoon while all the kids got to fly gliders and go sailing and things like that, <coughs> I sat there sandpapering desks. So uh, I came to rue my decision not to Yay. sign up. Uh, anyway, uh, 